You say, Jesus, I'm gonna, I'm gonna humble myself right now and I don't feel like it and I don't understand them, but I'm gonna humble myself right now and I'm gonna go serve them and I'm trusting you that you're gonna honor me and bless me for this. And he will. See, when your spouse is talking to you about their needs, what they're saying is, I can't do this or I do it for myself. I married you because you can do this. You have everything I need inside of you. Would you serve me? Would you serve me? So I'm, I'm saying here, serve what your, the S of serve is serve what your spouse needs regardless of what you need, want, or understand. Just take it by faith. And we should never sin to meet a need in our spouse, but short of sin, serve your spouse. Okay. So imagine going into a restaurant for just a minute and I'm describing marriage. Imagine going into a restaurant and a waiter or waitress walks up and you say, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna take a hamburger and fries and some iced tea. And they go, that doesn't sound good to me. <laughs> Try again. I'm just, I gotta get motivated to serve you. And I, it doesn't sound good to me right now. Okay, I'll take pizza. I don't think we need pizza now, do we? <laughs> we look like we've had a lot of pizza lately. And so let's try again. Well, I guess I'll take a salad. Good choice. And, and you're just going, why do I have to make you happy to get served? Why does it have to be something that you want before you'll serve me? And I'm saying that's why there are so many unmet needs in marriage. When your spouse tells you what they want, don't analyze it. Don't reject it. Let me, let me say this. So the, the second uh, the letter in serve is enjoy serving your spouse and do it with a joyful attitude. Enjoy it. Okay. So let me say this. Here's my, here's my pet peeve. I'm going to tell you one of my pet peeves. When I go into a business and I'm doing business with a person, and let's, let's just say that I you know, order iced tea at a restaurant, and I say, hey, can I get some more tea? And they come and get my glass and give me some more tea, and they bring it back, and I say this. I'll say, thank you very much. And they'll go, no problem. I hate that. I don't care if it was a problem. I'm paying for you to have problems. <laughs> If you had to go to China and get the tea in Antarctica to get the ice, I'm all good with that. As long as you got back, I don't care about your problems. I mean, not that I don't like you as a human, but you're serving me. No problem. Oh, here's the, here's the right response. My pleasure. I tip bigger. If I get a no problem, I want my pleasure. Thank you. Thank you so much for getting me the tea. What was my pleasure? The best businesses and restaurants train their people to say, my pleasure. You just feel better. So, you, know, so you, you go to your spouse and you say, well, you know, honey, I need this and this and this. And, and your spouse responds like this. <laughs> well, Barbara said her husband doesn't need that. Shaming, eye-rolling, body language is rejection. If, if you don't serve your spouse with a good attitude, you're rejecting them. And so when you come to your spouse and you tell them what your, your needs are, and Karen would come to me and she would say, you know, Karen and I serve each other all day long. Literally, we serve each other all day long, every day. We've been married for 44 years. We have a good marriage. And we serve each other. I mean, that, that's just what we do. But the way that Karen responds to me when, when I'm asking her to do something, the way that I respond to her, we don't do that. We don't, I'm happy. The number one reason for my life is to serve Jesus Christ. The number two reason in my life is to serve that woman right there. She's not a burden to me. And see... When you roll your eyes and shame and reject and judge and do all those things, what you're saying is, you're not that important to me. I've got something better to do than to sit here and take care of you. Really? Because when we got married, I thought that's what you wanted to do. I thought our vows said that we were going to love and cherish each other till death parted us. And now what I hear you saying is, I'm a burden. And you think I'm strange. Number three, this is, this is the R in serve. Reject scorekeeping and do what you do with the spirit of grace and faith. Let me go back to the point I just made. Let me say one more thing about that. 
and that is this. One of the things that, that Karen and I will say to each other pretty regularly is, you okay? When I say to Karen, if you've been married 44 years, you have a code language for everything. Okay. So my code language for Karen is, are you okay? Here's what I'm saying when I'm asking if she's okay. If there's anything in your life that's not right, I will crawl through cut glass to make it right. And it would be a joy. Am I doing okay? Am I being a good husband to you? Is there any unmet need in your life? Listen, if you're not willing to ask your spouse that, there's something wrong. How, are you, how do you know you're being a good husband until your wife tells you? Your buddies can't tell you that. Your, your wife is the only one to tell you. How do you know you're being a good wife unless your husband tells you? And if you're threatened by asking that question, there's something wrong. Because the number one reason I'm on this earth is to serve Jesus. And one of the ways I serve Jesus is by serving Karen. If I'm not a good husband, does it matter what else I am? And the only way that I know I'm going to be a good husband is she tells me I am. Okay, so let me go back to R. Reject scorekeeping and do what you do with the spirit of grace and faith. And you would say, some people would say, when I teach on this, well, they don't deserve it. You know, I would, they're, they're bad. And I would serve them, but it would just, you know, it would just encourage them. And I don't want to do that. Uh, they need to repent and they need to get their heart right. 1 Peter 2, to this you were called because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that you should follow his steps. So it's saying here, Jesus left us an example. When we were doing the wrong thing, he did the right thing. That's what that's saying. Then it talks specifically about husbands and wives here. 1 Peter 3, 1, the same goes for you wives, talking about suffering for your husbands, not abuse, suffering. Be good wives to your husbands, responsive to their needs. There are husbands who, indifferent as they may be to the words of God, will be captivated by your life of holy beauty. What matters is not your outward appearance, the styling of your hair, the jewelry you wear, the cut of your clothes, but your inner disposition. Cultivate inner beauty, the gentle, gracious kind that God delights in. Here's what it's saying. It's saying if your husband's doing the wrong thing, the best thing you can do is do the right thing. It's called redemptive love. Jesus redeemed us out of our sins, not through threats, but by sacrificial love. It says then to men, the same goes for you husbands. Be good husbands to your wives. Honor them, delight in them. As women, they lack some of our advantages, physical strength. But in the new life of God's grace, you're equals. Treat your wife then as equals so that your prayers don't run aground. Now, so in other words, if you don't do this, uh, your prayers will be hindered. You're never doing better than, with God than you are with your wife. That's bad news for some guys. It's called redemptive love. Serving puts us in our most powerful position to influence each other. If, if, when I was doing the wrong thing, I remember one time Karen and I were fighting. I think I was around 22 years old. And we were fighting, and I, I was a terrible husband. I was chauvinistic. I was dominant. I played golf all the time. And we were fighting, and Karen walked out of the room, and she, um, I, I think I was watching golf on television. And I, I, I was just expecting a good fight. And Karen walked into the room with lunch on a tray and put it in my lap and gave me a kiss on the cheek and walked out. And I thought, no, nah, don't do that now. <laughs> fight, fight me like a man. I don't do this now. <laughs> John 13, supper being ended, the devil having already put it in the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray him. Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and he had come from God and was going to God, rose from supper, laid aside his garments, took a towel and girded himself. And after that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel with which he was girded. Then Simon Peter came up and said, Lord, are you washing my feet? Did you know that Jesus was in the power position at that table, not the disciples? Listen, you can only defeat a spirit with the opposite spirit. If you fight fire with fire, you're going to get a big, bigger fire. And you say, well, my husband's proud and my husband is inattentive and he doesn't take care of me. Well, how are you going to deal with that? My wife, is, she's stubborn and she's this and this and this and she's selfish and this and this and this. How are you going to deal with that? When you're serving, you're in the power position. You say, you say someone's proud. Serving, serving means humility. You can, proud people can't serve. 
especially with a good attitude. When, when you're serving, it says you, you be careful how you treat your wife. You treat her as an equal now. You treat her as though she's a weaker vessel. And I do not believe that women are weaker vessels. I think God made women a little bit physically weaker so they wouldn't take over the universe. But I don't think, <laughs> I don't think they're weaker. But it's not a point system. It's not, that's what I'm trying to say. It's not a point system. When your spouse doesn't deserve it, that's when you need to serve them even more. Because it's called redemptive love. How are you going to get them back? Scolding them, yelling at them, cutting them off? That's a worldly way of doing it. But you give when you don't want to give. Okay? V, here's the V in serve. Vigilantly protect the priority of your marriage and the time and energy to serve your spouse. The law, the law of priority, for this cause a man will leave his father and mother. That's what God said when he created Adam and Eve. And the reason that we know that he, that he didn't say it just to them is they didn't have a mother. God made both of them directly. For this cause, the cause of marriage is so important that you have to reprioritize the most important people and things in your life. The reality of priority is who you serve the most and best. And the dynamic of many marriages today is people are just too tired to meet each other's needs. In other words, you're going to work and you're serving people, you're serving your children, you're serving whoever, and then you get home and you're, you don't have enough energy to, to have sex or to talk or to be together. And it's the old saying that if the devil can't get in front of you and stop you, he'll get behind you and push you too fast. Either way, you're messed up. You have, you have to say this, you come first. You come first. I'm not putting you at the end of the line. And I'm not going to serve the kids and serve everybody else and serve my friends and then get home tired. You come first. And what that means is you get the first and best of my energies. That's the way God designed marriage. We have to vigilantly protect it. Let me talk about children for just a minute. And I say this with all seriousness. You know, I say there, it's, parenting is very simple. You know, children are very simple creatures. They want one thing. They just want to possess your soul. You know, they, <laughs> they're very simple people. Your children want to control 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and you're on call for them, and you can't even be alone together. I remember when our kids, we, we taught our children to respect our marriage, and we would take care of them and meet all their needs, and then we would put them in bed when they were older. We just taught them, we taught them, this is your time now. Now mom and dad are going to go in the bedroom and have their time. And we had a little sitting area in the bedroom, and we would go in there and like pop popcorn and sit and talk without any distractions. We did that on a regular basis. And we had a lock on the door, you know, which was a good thing. And <laughs> children want to possess your soul. Our daughter, um, we were being very loving to one another one night. And uh, <laughs> our daughter picked the lock and walked in. We scared her straight. <laughs> I can tell you that right now. Yeah. She became a nun. Uh, <laughs> she loves her convent. But... Let, let me talk about healing. Let, let me talk about healing. She has two daughters, and one of them did it to her last year. And she called and said, Mom and Dad, you won't believe what, what Eldest did. And I, we just said, that just healed our hearts. We, <laughs> I tell people, your children are not as important as your marriage. And some people get mad at that. Because some people say, well, our children are our lives. Listen to me, your children are a temporary assignment. You know, when your children get 18, 19, 37, they're going to leave home, hopefully. <laughs> you know? Hopefully. They're going to leave home. And how are they going to succeed in marriage if you didn't show them how? And when they leave home, your marriage is going to be a shell. When our kids left home, when we had an empty nest, Karen and I were so happy they were gone. And... <laughs> And we loved them. I mean, we, we missed them kind of a little bit, but you know, <laughs> it's just, if you're successful as a parent, you raise children and they leave and you're still close to your kids, but they don't want you in their lives all the time. I mean, every day, all day long. You can say no to things. You can downsize your life. Maybe you can do with less things, but I can say this, less money and more love will make you happier then more money and less love. Somebody needs to say amen. amen. One more thing. This is the E and serve. Expect to be blessed and don't get discouraged and give up. Do this by faith. 
Remember Jesus' Jesus' promise? He who is greatest among you shall be your servant. Whoever exalts himself will be humbled, but he who humbles himself will be exalted. He says, I want you to serve, and you're going to have to humble yourself to do this, but here's what I promise you. If you'll humble yourself and serve, I'll exalt you. You do this by faith. You say, Jesus, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to humble myself right now, and I don't feel like it, and I don't understand them, but I'm going to humble myself right now, and I'm going to go serve them, and I'm trusting you that you're going to honor me and bless me for this. And he will. That was his promise. Let me tell you one more promise. This is, I'm done. This is Luke 6. Let's listen to the promise of Jesus. If you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners love those who love them. And if you do good to those who do good to you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners do the same. And if you lend to, to those to, from whom you hope to receive back, what credit is that to you? Even sinners lend to sinners to receive as much back. But love your enemies, do good, lend, hoping for nothing in return. And your reward will be great and you will be sons for the most, of the Most High. For he is kind to the unthankful and evil. Therefore be merciful just as your Father is merciful. Judge not and you will not be judged. Condemn not and you will not be condemned. Forgive and you will be forgiven. Give, the context is love that is undeserved. Give and it will be given to you good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over. It will be put into your bosom. For with the same measure that you use, it will be measured back to you. How many of you want a big measure? Did, did you know that God doesn't decide how much blessing we get? We do. According to our measure, we are, by our behavior, we're establishing a measure in heaven. And sometimes we're saying, God bless us. And God says, angel, bring, bring me their measure. And it's a little like an eyedropper. <laughs> we think a bird just flew over. It's like, yeah. no, that was my blessing. That's your measure. It's like... I want my measure to be so big that it washes me down the street when God pours it out. Anybody agree with what I'm saying? According to your standard, listen, you be kind to people that don't deserve it because your father is kind to the ungrateful and evil. You love your enemies. You do good to those who don't do good to you. You bless those who curse you. You pray for those who spitefully use you. You give. And it will be given to you, good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over. It'll be poured right back into your lap according to your standard of measure. Somebody needs to say amen. amen. <laughs> Marriage works when you serve. Marriage works when you serve. And I'm just going to ask a question. I'll pray for you real quick. Will you serve each other? And maybe you're mad at each other right now, or maybe you have some issues. Okay. Will you serve each other? Will you be humble? Will you be happy? Will you do it with a good attitude? And, and, and when, you, when you, you do something for your spouse and, and they, you say thank you, and they say no problem, don't say no problem. <laughs> you call me if they say that. <laughs> you say, it's my pleasure. There's not one thing in my life more important than serving you. And I'll change anything in my life if you're not happy. It'll change your marriage. Bow your heads with me if you would. Lord, we want to be like you. We want to be like you. We want to be like Jesus. And it's just kind of astounding to us that the Son of God, who created all things, cooked dinner, cooked breakfast for his disciples. You cooked us breakfast, Lord. You, you promised us that one day when you return, if we're ready, that you're going to gird yourself in service in heaven. It's just incredible. And Lord, we just thank you for that. That's our example. That's our example. We reject the example that's in the world right now. And we commit to serving each other. Meeting each other's needs with a great attitude. I pray your blessing over these couples in all the locations. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs>